Hi guys, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and I thought I'd make a quick movie showing you how to correctly warp a track in Ableton Live. Ableton's warping technology has got a lot better over the years, so nowadays when you import a track, it normally correctly works out the tempo, and puts all the beats in the right places so that when you play the track, it correctly synchronizes to your session's tempo. However, it's not always the case, as you can see in this session here, I've been sent from a student who's trying to make a mashup of two tracks. The second one, for some reason, hasn't been warped correctly and live seems to have worked out that the tempo is 96 BPM, which is too slow. So when I play the track now, it plays too fast. So the first thing I would do if I zoom in, I can see for some reason the first beat isn't in the right place. So if I zoom in a bit more, you can see there's a pseudo marker right at the start of the first beat here. So if I double click on that, it activates the marker, which holds it in place. Or I can just control click or right click on a PC directly on the marker and then choose set 111 here. So now it's starting in the right place. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily turn off warp for the clip. So now when I play it, it plays at its original tempo. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on the tap tempo switch in the top left corner. If I click on every beat sounding in the track, then what it should do is it will change the tempo of my session to match that of the track. As clicking on this tap tempo changes the timing of your session according to the timing that you click on it. So let's play the clip. It seems to be averaging around 128 BPM. So if I now click on the tempo, type in 128, then I turn on the metronome, and I play the clip again. You can hear that sounds about right. So what I'll do now is I'll click on warp to turn warp back on for the clip. Then once again, zoom in on this first transient, control click or right click it. And now in my warp options at the bottom, you end up with a few different options, which now say 128 BPM, as that's the tempo of my session. The first one is warp from here, starting at 128 BPM. And the other one is forces it to warp at 128 BPM continuously from this point. So if I select that, now all the beats are in the right places, as you can see. However, what's actually happening here is that it's slightly shifting out as the track plays. As you can see, these beats aren't exactly on. So it's getting faster more and more throughout the track. So what I could do is I could play this now and I could just, as it plays, just shift the beats to the right place. However, a slightly quicker way of doing this is just to place a few choice markers throughout the track. And then as long as the track has a continuous tempo, it'll all be in time. So an obvious point would be drop one, where the beats are very clear and distinct and uh, easy to correct. So if I just check this bit. Tsunami. So here's the first beat. Um, if I zoom in, actually the transient here isn't quite as easy to detect as the second beat, which is a bit more obvious. So rather than drag this one, I'm going to drag the second beat here to beat two of that bar. Um, and then if we just quickly look back earlier in the track, you can see all these beats are still in the right place. So what I'll do is repeat this for the second drop. Again, second beat to beat two. And then finally, if I jump right to the very end of the track here, again, you can see these last kicks just slightly um, out of time. So if I play them, drag this last one to beat four, and now the entire track should be synchronized correctly.
Yeah, so now that's done. Um, the other thing to remember is that if you want this to be saved, so that every time you drag the track into live, this is how it's warped, remember to click on the save switch in the sample box. Okay, I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you next time.